What's going on guys? It's Drama back with another episode of NBA Talk and last night was the NBA Draft. So tonight we're going to discuss what my favorite and least favorite picks were as well as what was the worst draft pick of all time. All right, so let's start off on a high note and go with my favorite pick of this year's draft, and that has to be Denzel Valentine going number 14 to the Chicago Bulls. I'm actually shocked Valentine fell this deep into the draft. I had him going to the Milwaukee Bucks so that Jason Kidd could finally play that true positionless basketball he envisions, but they decided to take a chance on Thon Maker, so Valentine fell to the Bulls at 14. And if I could describe Denzel in one word as a player, it would be solid. Valentine's offensive game is very well-rounded. He can shoot a little, pass a little, dribble a little, and drive a little. He's just that solid. Now, his defense may be a question mark, but at least he tries. That's part of defense. Some guys don't even attempt to make the right rotation or hustle on D. Valentine doesn't have that problem, but he isn't as explosive or quick enough to guard faster perimeter wing players. Now, there is a little bit of concern with Valentine's knee, but I'm not too concerned about it because again, he's not that explosive or athletic, so he doesn't have to rely on athleticism to do what he does. So in the long run, Valentine should be a pretty good pro. All right, so that was my favorite pick. My least favorite pick may surprise you, and that's Jamal Murray going seven to the Denver Nuggets. Look, I love Jamal Murray. I really do. I think he's a fantastic player, especially from what I saw when he was playing with Team Canada, and they were attempting to make a comeback against the very good international team of Brazil. He was basically playing a point guard position for them, really setting up his teammates well, shooting the lights out, getting to the line, and making the right plays in transition. But here's the thing. I said he was playing the point guard position. He's not gonna get that opportunity in Denver. When the Nuggets were on the clock, Marquise Chris was still on the board. And this is a guy a lot of scouts had going at the four spot to the Phoenix Suns. He's this very athletic big that could stretch the floor a little bit with his mid-range shot and even with the three ball. And this is exactly what the Denver Nuggets need, especially with the rumors of Kenneth Fareed on the trade block. They also have this guy named Emmanuel Moutier who's a fantastic pick and roll player, but the Nuggets problem is that they don't have anyone to run the pick and roll with the Moutier. Look, I know the Denver Nuggets lack perimeter shooting and that's exactly what Jamal Murray gives them, but the potential for a Marquise Chris and Emmanuel Moutier pick and roll is tantalizing in my opinion. And I think Jamal Murray's best value is going to be at the one spot. With his tremendous touch and incredible size, he could really be a good playmaker at the NBA level, and he's just not going to get that opportunity with Emmanuel Moutier on the same roster. All right, so that was my favorite and least favorite pick of this year's draft, but let's ask the question, what was the worst draft pick of all time? And that answer is my opinion goes to the Atlanta Hawks who drafted Marvin Williams second overall in 2005. Last season, Marvin Williams actually had a pretty good year for the Charlotte Hornets, but he kind of struggled in the playoffs, and that's just not enough for me to excuse the Atlanta Hawks passing up on not one, but two great point guards. Now let's put this in perspective. Maybe the Hawks already had a point guard and they didn't need Darren Williams or Chris Paul. You would be wrong to assume that because the two point guards on that roster were Tyron Lu and Royal Ivy. Wait a minute. Okay, well, maybe the Hawks had a hole in the wing or the power forward slot and they wanted to fill it with Marvin Williams. But again, you would be wrong to assume that because they had Josh Childress and Josh Smith at that position. Two young players that they needed to develop at the same exact position Marvin Williams plays in. So basically what this comes down to is that Atlanta Hawks needed a point guard and they had two perfectly good ones on the draft board, but they decided to draft the power forward Marvin Williams out of North Carolina with the second overall pick. It hurts me just to say that. And to add insult to injury, they drafted Williams as a power forward to keep Josh Smith at the small forward spot. But later in their careers, they ended up just switching and it didn't work out for them whatsoever. And Josh Smith really would have developed very nicely had Chris Paul been throwing him lobs, potentially being Blake Griffin before Blake Griffin. 
All right, you guys, that pretty much takes care of this week's episode of NBA Talk. Let me know who your team's pick was and whether you like it or not in the comment section below. My name's Jaren. This has been NBA Talk. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Epic, dominant, highly entertaining performance by one LeBron James. Let's talk about my favorite LeBron sneaker of all time. There is no micro G in this model, but that's not a bad thing. The charge foam cushion setup Under Armour use is fantastic, especially if you're a guard who likes a low responsive ride. If you're looking for a lot of impact protection and something that feels like a pillow underneath your feet, 